Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today we're gonna to take a look at my favorite backup utility for photographers who happen to use Mac called Carbon Copy Cloner. If you're a photographer and you're also a Mac user and you don't have a good backup system, this video is for you. So what is Carbon Copy Cloner? Well, this program has been around for years. In fact, it's been around for as long as I have been doing photography and I've actually used it for most of that time. I looked it up, I actually bought my first Carbon Copy Cloner license about 10 years ago. And since then we've recommended it to hundreds of students through the years. And I can honestly say that I have never seen it fail. It has always done a phenomenal job for me and for every everyone I've known who've used it. Now let's get some basic information out of the way. Carbon Copy Cloner is a Mac only utility and it costs $40 one time in order to use it. Now that $40 entitles you to that version of Carbon Copy Cloner, which should work for your current operating system as well as maybe into the future. However, as operating systems get upgraded, as computers get upgraded, there will be instances where you need to pay that $40 again to get the newer version of the software. And to me, this is one of those things where they update the features that Carbon Copy Cloner has, obviously, with every software iteration, but truly, I'm using capabilities as a photographer that were available in the first version that I started using of Carbon Copy Cloner, which I believe was version three. So this isn't an upgrade to get new features, it's more of an upgrade to ensure compatibility with the operating system that you happen to be using. I do want to say for those of you who are Windows users, next week I'm going to be doing another video like this on my favorite Windows backup utility, which is called SyncBack. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to be notified when we publish that video. Now, in order to properly use Carbon Copy Cloner, we need to understand what it does. At its core, Carbon Copy Cloner is a cloning utility, meaning that its sole purpose is to make your destination drive look like your source drive. For me, I store all of my images on an external hard drive, and that hard drive is called my main photo drive. It's where my images live, it's where my Lightroom catalog lives, it's where my astro photos live, it's where everything lives. And what I do is I use Carbon Copy Cloner to take that main photo drive as my source drive and clone it to my backup drive, which is called my backup photo drive. So it does main photo drive to backup photo drive. What's important to note though, is that a clone inherently makes your backup drive exactly the same as your source drive. Meaning if you have anything on that backup drive that does not exist on the source, by default, those items will be deleted. Because of this, you need a backup drive that's sole purpose is to be the destination to clone your main photo drive to. Now this is super awesome because what it means is if you ever have your main photo drive fail, your backup photo drive is an exact duplicate at your time of last backing up. So all you need to do in order to get back up and running is rename your backup photo drive to be called main photo drive. You'll open Lightroom and everything is just like you left it at your last backup. It's a super smooth process. So by cloning a drive, we have the disadvantage of not being able to use that backup drive for multiple purposes, but we have the huge advantage of being able to immediately get back up and running after a drive failure. For more on backing up and safe practices, check out my backup video. I'll throw it up there in the corner. I definitely recommend giving that a watch because that overviews my best practices when it comes to backing up. I don't wanna belabor that too long because this video primarily I wanna focus on Carbon Copy Cloner itself and how we set it up for photography. Okay, so we know what we need. We need a source drive and we need a destination drive. We also need to make sure that those drives are formatted in a way that Carbon Copy Cloner recognizes and can work with. And that happens in a program called Disk Utility. So here I've opened Disk Utility. Now you can get to Disk Utility through just a simple spotlight search, or you can go into your applications folder and in applications, there's a folder called utilities and you can open it from there. But by default, Disk Utility hides a lot of useful information from us. So my first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to view and I'm gonna go to show all devices. This is where now I can see over here on the left, all of the different drives that are plugged into my computer. Now I wanna just point a couple of things out because if you just went to the store and you bought a brand new backup drive, usually that backup drive has some extra crap on it that was put on there by the manufacturer. So if it's a Seagate drive, it might have the Seagate backup utility and I don't recommend that you use that. So the first thing I will do with any new hard drive from the store is format it. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here over on the left. This is that external drive that I have plugged in. And you'll notice I'm not going to the volume on the drive, I'm going to the top level of the drive here. That top level is only visible if we go view and show all devices, like I said before. From there, I'm gonna to go to the upper right hand corner and choose erase. Now this is very simple. Drives like to work on the platform that they are formatted on. So I'm gonna format this drive for Mac and for use on a Mac. Very, very simple. The first thing I'm gonna do is give it a name. I'm gonna call this my backup photo drive. Now, I need to make this very clear. Formatting erases everything on the hard drive. So do not do this unless you are happy and ready to erase everything. The second thing that I'm gonna do after I give it a name is I'm gonna choose a format. I'm gonna make this super easy for all of you guys. If we choose the scheme of GUID partition map, which we should, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick that, the format should be one of two things. If it's a solid state hard drive, meaning no moving parts, probably was more expensive than a traditional spinning hard drive, we're gonna choose APFS. APFS has been updated and made to work best with solid state hard drives. If on the other hand, you have a more traditional spinning hard disk drive or HDD, you are gonna choose Mac OS extended journaled. Depending on the drive type, we pick our format based on that. This happens to be an SSD, so I'm gonna choose APFS with the scheme of GUID partition map. From here, I'm gonna hit erase. We're gonna let that drive do its job here. Sometimes this fails. Um, I'd say a good half the time it'll just stop and it'll say format failed and you can just do it one more time. Um, that happens quite often. But here we can go ahead and hit done here and now we have a formatted hard drive and this 500 gig hard drive has been formatted to be called backup photo drive. So that's my process for getting my backup photo drive ready to send things to with Carbon Copy Cloner. Obviously don't format your main photo drive uh, because it will erase all your data if you're trying to do that. So that takes us into Carbon Copy Cloner. At this point, we need to do a couple things. If you're using the trial, because they do offer a free 30-day trial, you can just hit Extend Trial. You can also hit the Buy Now button if you wanna purchase a license and activate your software. But regardless of how you get into it, you will be granted with this box first and foremost, where it needs full disk access. Obviously, Carbon Copy Cloner needs to read and write from different hard drives, and so we need to enable that permission on our Mac. And luckily, it makes it super easy. It outlines the four steps right here. So step one is click here to open security and privacy. You can see we click that, this opens automatically. Step two, click the lock icon to allow changes. So I'll go down here, click the lock icon, go ahead and log in, that'll unlock it. And then step three is drag the fish icon below into the full disk access table. So I'll scroll down here, make sure we're on full disk access, and I'll drag the fish into this box. All right, Carbon Copy Cloner immediately says, great job, and it lets me back up. Uh, Mac does pop up this box and you can just hit later on this box and then close security and privacy. So that only needs to happen once uh, per computer. So if you get a new machine or if you format your old one, you will need to do that again. Uh, but once that's set up, it should remember it. And now we're into the good stuff. You guys check out how easy this is. All we gotta do in Carbon Copy Cloner is set a few different things. What's our source, what's our destination, and what do we want to back up? Now, this depends on who you are as a photographer. If you store things on your internal hard drive, Carbon Copy Cloner can clone the folder on your internal that you store your images to and send those to an external. As an example, I could click here on source and I could go to choose a folder and I could choose my entire pictures folder and hit okay, and that would tell Carbon Copy Cloner to back up everything inside my pictures folder. You could also just back up your entire hard drive. If we wanted to choose a different source here and go to Macintosh HD, we could set our entire internal as our source for backing up. So if you don't know where your pictures live, maybe you don't wanna worry about it, but you wanna know, whew, they're safe, they're somewhere and they're backed up, you could pick the whole hard drive. So we choose our source here. For me personally, I click this and I go to choose a different source and I choose main photo drive when my main photo drive is plugged in because all of my photos and my catalog are stored on that drive called main photo drive. So I would do that for my purposes. For this purpose though, I'm just gonna say my pictures folder. So we'll go to pictures, gonna hit okay, and there we go. Next is destination. This is where we want things to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here and I'm gonna choose my backup photo drive. Now, like I told you, this can be configured in some cases to delete anything that's on the destination that is not on the source. And we want that to happen because 
if things were to go down, things were to crash, to die, to, to do whatever bad things might happen, we wanna be able to take what's on that backup photo drive and start using that as our main photo drive, as our drive that stores our images. So what I like to do is then right click where it says destination here and turn off this thing called safety net. Safety net is a feature that Carbon Copy Cloner builds in that allows it to keep things on the backup drive that you have deleted off of the main drive. And that scares me because a true clone is a clone that you can use if your main drive dies, you can start using the backup drive as the main. And if we're keeping more on the backup drive than what's on the main, we run into a little bit of a mismatch situation. So I'm gonna turn off safety net here, which kind of sounds scary because you're turning off this thing that's called safety, but I highly recommend it, right? Again, another little example, Say you go to a wedding, you photograph a wedding, you take 5,000 pictures, right? And you're following my backup best practices. So as soon as you import those 5,000 pixel pictures, you back up. Well, as soon as the backup's done, those 5,000 images are on the main drive and they're on the backup drive. What are you gonna do next? Well, you're gonna edit those. You're gonna get rid of a bunch of them. You're probably gonna throw away half of those 5,000 pictures. So you throw away 2,500 of them. The next time you back up, you want those same 2,500 photos deleted off of the backup drive so that two years from now, if your main drive dies, all those wedding photos don't just come back miraculously when you restore from that backup drive. So that's why I recommend deleting those off of there um, and, and turning off safety net. From there, I'm gonna hit the start button. It's gonna pop up this warning that says, hey, this might delete files and photos from the backup photo drive. We know that, we just talked about it, and I would go ahead and hit run now. And I'm not gonna run this because I don't need to, but that's the process, very, very simply. Now, this is an iterative backup, which means the first time you run it, if you have 30,000 photos, it's gonna take it a number of hours to complete. But at each subsequent time, the more frequently you back up, it's only gonna copy the things that have changed, and so you're gonna be left with quicker and quicker backups as time goes on. Um, that first backup is gonna take a while, and then from there, it's gonna be a pretty quick process. So, like I said in my backup video, backup any time you did anything important. I always, when I've imported new pictures, I run a backup immediately after. Hard drives all fail. I should also say, remember, watch that backup video, but I would also have a third drive that is a third copy of everything that I care about. Hopefully you found this video useful. Again, if you are a PC user, next week we are going to be releasing a video on SyncBack, which is the PC equivalent to Carbon Copy Cloner for those of you who are interested. But hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button, I would appreciate it. Hit subscribe down in the corner to stay up to date with future videos. And if you all have any questions, leave it in the comments section down below. This video was not sponsored by Carbon Copy Cloner. I just really like their software and I highly recommend it to everyone. Thanks everybody, catch you in the next one.